So the superheterodyne architecture is looking to solve an important problem of the image and channel selectivity in the down conversion. And if you remember from the previous module, we talked about the trade-offs of a high and low IF. And the superheterodyne basically adds an additional down conversion stage in order to try to separate this constraint so that you can optimize for both image rejection and channel selectivity. The image signal is removed by the first step here. And the inner band interference is removed by the second stage down here. And I should just mention that every time we're doing a down conversion, we're always going to have this problem of an image. So even though we remove one image here, when we do this down conversion, there's another image up here that we may want to um, also have to reduce. So I've drawn a little cartoon to show this in each step. So here is our starting signal. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with an initial LO here and an image reject filter that's going to attenuate this one on the side. And that's going to down convert this to here, to this little section here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with another LO2, and it's going to down convert this down to zero. Now, as I mentioned before in the previous slide, we've got an image over here. And so when we filter this, we do want to filter this one so that we get rid of that image. Because every time we do a down conversion, there's always the problem of the image. And what this does is this allows us to make a wide LO so that we get a large attenuation here. And then it allows us to down convert close to baseband where absolute bandwidth is small. Okay. So each step is simply an attempt to optimize the image rejection and then the channel rejection here.